All right, Ms. Bench, are you there? I'm here. All right, Ms. Bench is our court reporter tonight. So, Ms. Bench, let's go on the record. All right, we are on the record. Today is June 12, 2023. The time is uh, 7.55 p.m. My name is Ken Sire. I'm a regulatory law judge with the Missouri Public Service Commission, and I will preside over this portion of the hearing. The commission has set this time for a local public hearing in file number WR 2023-0006, which is captioned as, in the matter of Confluence Rivers Utility Operating Company Incorporated's request for authority to implement a general rate increase for water service and sewer service provided in Missouri service areas. The commission has scheduled this local public hearing to give members of the public a chance to comment about uh, Confluence Rivers rate case. The Missouri Public Service Commission regulates the rates charged by public utility companies in Missouri to ensure that those rates are just and reasonable. The commission also regulates the quality of service and safety of the operations of public utilities. Confluence Rivers is a public utility under the Missouri statutes and as such is subject to regulation by the commission. The commission, the commission is made up of five commissioners. The commissioners are appointed by the governor to fixed terms and confirmed by the Senate. The commissioners employ a staff of engineers, accountants, attorneys, financial analysts, and other specialists in the field of utility regulation. Uh, this evening, we have two of the commissioners here in person, uh, Commissioner Jason Holzman and Commissioner Glenn Kolkmeyer. This is an official uh, hearing of the Missouri Public Service Commission, and the statements and testimony of witnesses will be recorded by a court reporter and must be given under oath. Once the hearing testimony is transcribed, all of the commissioners will have the opportunity to read all of the witnesses' remarks and you should know that the commissioners do value your comments and input. Now, um, I know the question and answer session, uh, at least for us, lasted a little longer than usual. So uh, tonight what we'd, like, what we'd like to set as a goal is to uh, complete this portion of the hearing by 9.30 and um, we will I won't be a stickler about this, but I'll try to limit each person's testimony to five minutes. Um, so, at this time, would either of the commissioners like to make uh, opening remarks? Thank you. Turn on. Can you hear me? There we go. Thank you and good evening. Uh, my name is Jason Holzman. I'm a commissioner. Uh, nearly every summer, I've spent my entire life here at the Lake of the Ozarks. Uh, my great-great-grandfather helped build Lake Ozark Christian Church at the end of Dog Patch where my wife and I were married. We had our um, reception at the lodge, and we have had a family home here up, you know, till now. And so I feel like I am a member of this community and, and have been for my entire life. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I know where you're, you're coming from, uh, and I appreciate you taking your time. There are a lot of places you could be tonight. You chose to be here. That matters to us. It matters what you testify. Uh, now we cannot answer any questions, um, but we are listening, and I do want to thank you for, for being here. Thank you, Commissioner. Uh, Commissioner Kolkmeyer. Yes, thank you, Judge. And again, good evening. Um, I, too, am a property owner at the lake uh, over by Laurie. So um, I live at Odessa, but uh, we, have a, we have a lake home here. So. Um, here again, I we do appreciate your comments. We do listen to them. Um, so uh, thank you for coming and thank you for sharing your opinion. And here again, we're not a able to answer any questions. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, that's a good question. Are there other commissioners uh, listening online? All right. Uh, uh, you've probably already been in introduced to several of these people tonight, but for the sake of the record, 
um, I'd like to have the parties that, or the, the attorneys that are representing the parties in this matter uh, identify themselves and state uh, the party that they're representing, and I'll start with uh, the company, Confluence Rivers. Thank you, Your Honor. David Wood Small on behalf of Confluence Rivers Utility Operating com Company, 1630 DePair Road, Suite 140, St. Louis, Missouri, 63131. A as most of you know, with me today are Mr. Thomas, Senior Vice President, and still here, Aaron Silas, our Director of Regulatory Affairs. If you have specific questions for them, I'd ask you to, to grab them. Let us know your um, any specific questions. Uh, service issues that you have so we can get them taken care of. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Woodsmall. Uh, for the Commission staff. Scott Stacy, Counsel for Staff, 200 Madison Street, Jefferson City, Missouri, 65101. And then for the Office of Public Counsel. John Kleiser, on behalf of the Missouri Office of the Public Counsel, my contact information can be found in the record. I will be available after the meeting if people have additional questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Kleiser. The way this portion of the hearing will proceed tonight will be to call the names listed on the sign-up sheet in the order that they uh, appear. When I call your name, please step up to the, po well, I say the podium, step up to the microphone, and then uh, before you speak, I will place you under oath and ask you to state and spell your name. And I will also ask you um, what community you live in or, or where you are a customer of Confluence Rivers. And then you can offer your comments to the commission. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we'll try to limit uh, each person's testimony to five minutes to give everyone a chance to testify that wishes to testify tonight. Uh, once you do finish your uh, comments, please remain at the microphone in case there are uh, follow-up questions from the commissioners or the attorneys for the parties. Um, as, as a couple of the, uh, as both the commissioners touched on, understand that the commissioners aren't able to answer any of your questions today because they have to remain impartial and only consider evidence presented at the evidentiary hearing in this matter, which is currently scheduled for August 10th, 11th, and then the 15th through the 17th. The commission has not made any decisions in this case as to Confluence Rivers uh, rates and other matters in the case. The commission is interested in your comments and will use them to help make their decision. If you have comments after the hearing or if you're unable to stay and give your comments uh, on the record, you may submit them via the PSC website, uh, psc.mo.gov. Um, and I believe on the right side of the home page, there's a, a column with a heading of, that starts out, how do I, and then, the, and then in that list is submit comments. But if you do submit comments, always remember to try to cite this case number, uh, file number, and it is WR 2023-0006. And I'll just, uh, no, I can, I'm sure I'll repeat it before we're done. <laughs> but I can repeat it right now if you like. Okay. Um, all right, so I will call names off the list and um, I'll apologize up front if I do not recognize your handwriting or if I just generally mispronounce your name. So uh, Mr. Hewlett, Ken Hewlett. All right, Mr. Hewlett, good evening. Um, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, and could you state your full name? Ken Hewlett. And could you spell the last name for us? H-U-L-E-T-T. -T. Okay, and where are, where are you a customer of Confluence Rivers? I'm the president of Cedar Glen Condos. Cedar Glen Condos, yes. and that's located where? In Camdenton. Okay. Um, then you can go ahead and proceed with your comments or, or uh, anything you'd like the commission to know. Okay, this will be short. Our request would be to beg for help from Missouri Public Service Commission it, to stop the Mr. request. Mr. Hewlett. Yes, sir. Um, 
these microphones pick up much better if you're within just a couple of inches. Okay, and is I'm this sure better? That, yes, much right. better. That'll help, okay. that'll help the court reporter. All right, I'll Correct. start over. Our request would be to beg for help from the Missouri Public Service Commission to stop the request from Confluence Rivers Utility Operating Company from charging unfair high rates for water and sewer. We think that's why there is a public service commission to protect the homeowners. And that's all I have. All right, if you could remain there for a second. Do any of the commissioners have questions for Mr. Hewlett? No questions. All right, do any of the attorneys for the parties have questions? I'm saying no. Uh, Commissioner Kolkmeyer does have a question. Yes, thank you for your comments. How big is your, your association or how many? 212. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. All right, the next names on the list are Norman Thrall and Sandy. Are you both planning on testifying? <laughs> All right. Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Thrall, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. And could you state and spell your name? Norman L. Thrall, T-H-R-A-L-L. -L. Okay. And um, where are you a customer of Confluence? Glen Meadows Subdivision, Troy, Missouri, Lincoln County. Okay. Um, and just, just to make sure that the court reporter got that, um, Glen Meadows Subdivision, uh, Lincoln County, Troy, Missouri. Correct. Okay. 63379. <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead with your uh, comments. I have uh, letters from neighbors right here as evidence, some of their complaints, uh, which uh, entered that into the record. Is that possible? I would, I would say that that's not possible, but they can be... Um, they can be entered in the comments section of the uh, of the uh, website. Yeah. They were not able to attend. Uh huh. Can you do it in five minutes? <laughs> well, they're, they're basically what you heard what you heard earlier. Um, uh, we have a lot of widows in our subdivision. My neighbor across the street from me is a single man. Uh, he, Mr. Mr. Thrall, yes. uh, first of all, again, for the sake of the record, are you saying like last name Whittles? The widow, their last name? Oh, Widows. Okay. Widows. My yes. mistake. Yes. <laughs> My mistake. I thought you were saying Whittles, like W H I T T L E. Mr. Kleiser, did you want to? I was going to offer to take the. Uh, the comments if they wanted to introduce them into the record later or uh, as part of the record, but we can deal with that later. Okay. Okay, back to comments. Uh, somebody's, uh, one of the widows lives two houses away from the well house. Dirty water, low pressure, dirty water quite often. Uh, I live probably a quarter mile by street. I've not got dirty water. People who live real close to the pump house. We have horizontal tanks, not a, not a tower. Uh, and as far as uh, their uh, hotline for the repairs and stuff like that, how close, well, you can't answer the question, but their A team, you know, as they want a you know, repair service. Uh, and like I said, no, uh, we have a lot of older people in us that I'm retired, disabled vet, and I make less than $40,000 a year. And this is the eighteen hundred dollar increase. If you go with the full amount uh, per per year, yeah, you do. I do the math and the numbers okay. they want. Yeah, it's eighteen hundred dollars. Okay. And just and three and just cents. so I'm clear, um, you're saying that in your subdivision, in Glen Meadows subdivision, uh, there's not a tank that uh, provides water pressure by gravity instead it's, it's horizontal, horizontal tanks, tanks. That are, that are, and the water has to be pumped yeah they have three of them in the building it's about the size of a tanker of a gas truck okay 
but uh, as far as the dirty water, that's that's an everyday occurrence. And one of these letters here is about the smell of sewer in their water, and that person is about a hundred yards away from the well house. Okay. And no meters and no water hydrants, fire hydrants. No meters. No. Is that what you said? Like M E T E R S. And they're using you know four thousand gallons. That's very excessive. Okay. Amount of usage. I believe that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, yes. Commissioner Holzman. So oftentimes, in cases like this, we'll have distressed water systems that an operator like Confluence will acquire, invest in, and then they're seeking through the rate increase the return on those investments. Is your system, has your system been invested in? I, is this, are you having these, the dirty water and the horizontal tanks after Confluence has come and, and put resources into your system or have they not put resources into your system? Uh, Mr. Maximer might have the answer to that. <laughs> I am actually on the list for testimony as well. So okay. I can answer your question. Mr. Judge? Judge? Yes. Yes, Ms. Bitch. Um, unless he speaks to a microphone, his comment won't go on the record. Okay. I am I am actually the president of the HOA for Glen Meadow Subdivision. I can answer the questions now or you can wait for the testimony if you won't like. Okay. <laughs> uh, <coughs> I believe I'm done. Okay. Well, I'd like the meters, well, that's the question. That, but. that question we can't answer. Mr. Uh, Commissioner Holzman, do you have anything further? Commissioner Coltmeyer, no? Uh, any questions from the attorneys for the parties? Yes, Mr. Kleiser. Sorry, sir, you indicated that you had several letters from other uh, witnesses, sorry, other people who were not able to attend, is that yes. correct? Yes, yes. And the commission has indicated it does not intend to take that as an exhibit, uh, is that correct? I don't know that it's proper to take it as an exhibit, but. That's, that's fine, I just wanted to know, should those be delivered directly to the commission, or if you would like, I can take uh, custody of those and we'll have them introduced it on our end. It's perfectly fine with me for you to take custody of those. All right. Please let me have those after the meeting. That was, thank you. I'm done. But what if they don't want to stay for the entire meeting? <laughs> 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 it, it, it is even past my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do we do we want to take you out of order? Is that if that's all right with everyone? Yeah. Sir, I don't know your name. I'm sorry. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Joseph Maxner. I am uh, president of the HOA of Glen Meadows Subdivision okay. in Lincoln County. All right. Um, are, uh, you've got your right hand raised. Thank you. <laughs> do you swear or affirm that the testimony given this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And could you? Go ahead and spell your name. M-A-I-X-N-E-R. Okay. Go ahead. So we have 235 homes within our subdivision. Uh, 235 homes within the subdivision. We are on a subdivision well and a subdivision treatment center. Um, the entity was just purchased in December of 2022. Um, officially took over January of 2023. So we're six months into this, and we're already being introduced to a rate increase when we have not had any significant improvements made to the facility. Um, the welcome letter that we received stated that they were going to invest $470,000 into our facility for a multitude of different things, um, one of them being a disinfection or uh, system for chlorinating. Um, to my knowledge, that would be a high, he a high health priority. Um, we're six months in, even that has not been done yet. Uh, on top of that, they have neglected the property that they own around the wellhouse area um, to the point that I had to submit work orders and then threaten to find them through the H HOA to get the 
grass maintained and the uh, landscaping taken care of. Um, that's, I mean, that's about all I've got other than the fact that uh, based on the minimum increases, which I did learn now that there's a separate increase proposal for the non-metered subdivisions. Um, but if they are similar, that $470,000 investment would be paid off just on this, this rate increase within 20 months. I think that's a little excessive because they can amortize out the depreciation over like 10 years. Okay, Commissioner Holzman. So without <clears throat> going into any of the substance of the answers, do you feel like you, the company provided you answers to your questions during the question and answer period time? Not really. Okay, thank you. All right, do any of the uh, attorneys for the parties have any questions for the witness? All right, hearing none, thank you for your testimony. Thank you. All right, the next person on the list is Teresa Labou. Good Thank evening. you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Now, did I pronounce your name correctly? Yes. Yes, you did. Okay. Not many people do. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, I'll, and I'll just say, say this generally. Even if you are on the list, uh, uh, there's no obligation for you to go ahead and testify if you decide that you don't want to testify or if you decide that or if you conclude that somebody has already kind of testified to the same thing that you would say. But since I've got you, you're going to testify. Okay. <laughs> so, Ms. LaBoob, could you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. And could you spell your first name and last name? T-H-E-R-E-S-A-L-A -E -E capital mm. B O U B E. All right. Thank you very much. And um, your customer? Of uh, Eagle Woods Subdivision. And that is where? That is just right across off of KK across from Tantara. Okay, so is it more Osage Beach? It's a county. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, so not in Camden Town or Os Osage Beach or? Uh, Camden County. Just in, in unincorporated, mm -hmm. I'm making this more complicated mm -hmm. than it has to be, but un unincorporated <laughs> yes. portion of Camden County. Yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Go ahead thank and, and uh, testify as to what you would like the commissioners okay. to know. Okay, first of all, um, in the, in the reading that I was able to do online and then questions that I was asked here, I learned that they, uh, Confluence did acquire 374 new water, wastewater and water uh, facilities just in the past 10 months, might have been 11. And then they tested, or when in conversation said that they are now, they don't make any money. Well, I don't think that sounds like real prudent uh, way of doing business, which was one of the things that we look at when we're looking at expenses, recovering of expenses, is that did they make prudent investments? So I, I just wanted to bring that up. And um, I asked if they looked at any other models as far as how to, how to make this revenue as opposed to just saying, okay, Everybody's going to pay this. You know, that seemed like an easy way out um, for them, not for us, and certainly not for the Office of uh, Public Counsel because they've done their work for them. If you go online and read all of the analysis that's been done and the different ways that this could be paid for, and um, again, I have to commend the Office of Public Counsel for doing that. And I would hope that they would look into some of those models because I think it is far more equitable. Like I said before, it's not that I don't care about Phelps County or any of the other counties, but what I really care about is equitability for the person that is incurring these costs. And let's see, some of these things got answered, so <laughs> bear with me a minute. Sure. Um, now I'm gonna switch to uh, sewer. 
Our uh, sewer problem. Our sewer problems. I'm going to ask you to get a little closer to the microphone. Yes. Okay. Our sewer problems is a, are a little bit unique, in that there is um, an easement that the confluence needs in order to get down to our sewer plant, and it's been tied up in court for a long time. Uh, I don't know how long, but I know it's a long time. I, I know when I moved in there six or seven years ago, it was in court then. And um, now Confluence cannot really get down to the sewer plant with their equipment adequately in order to service the plant like it should be serviced. And they are doing it by hand the best they can. But it's by far lacking, uh, although they claim that it is up to par. It's not. I mean, we smell the sewer stink a lot in that area. And um, uh, I wish that another person was here, but they had commented to me that they even saw sewer pipe breaks down below them. Um, the uh, litigation is just unforeseen when that's going to happen. And um, right now, DNR told, told we held a meeting with DNR, the, the people from Eagle Woods, and were told that they were not going to issue any more um, building permits for Eagle Woods subdivision because the sewer system was at max capacity. Right now the developer wants to put more homes in on the empty lots and is kind of just bugging us to move our stuff off his stuff and everything because he's going to build. But I know he doesn't have permits. Um, I think that pretty much everything else did get answered. Uh, or it was something that I wouldn't bring up because it's uh, irrelevant now. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, do the uh, commissioners have any questions? Oh, one more thing. I'm sure. sorry. I just thought of it. Yeah. The water. Getting back to the water. Mm -hmm. um, the water in, in our area has pr a lot of pressure problems, and they explained the fix for us here. And um, I don't know if Confluence is, is going to take that fix or not because they're also trying to work a deal with Margaritaville to um, link into their water system and just distribute to us over there. So all that being up in the air is the reason I can't really talk intelligently about that. But the pressure problem is that people on the low end can get good pressure, but by the time you get up on that hill, you can't do dishes and take a bath at the same time. So, so that's I don't, bad. I don't know that I would do dishes and take my bath at the same time, oh, but. Oh, there's a way. <laughs> 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 Depends so on how far back in the sticks you came from, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so are you on, on the low pressure end of that line? Uh, we are right about in the middle. Okay. Where I can't either. I DNR came down and they did a uh, pressure test for us, uh -huh. and it tested to acceptable. But then I said, okay, well, come on in the house because I want to show you what I've got running out of the tap. And it wasn't the same as what that pressure should have been. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Do uh, any of the attorneys for the parties have any questions for the witness, for Ms. LeMou? All right. Thank you very much for your testimony. Thank you. All right, next on the list is W.L. Seifkus. Seifkus? All right. Um, next person on the list is Nikki Cole. Uh, good evening, Miss Cole. Good evening. All right. Um, did he put that a little higher than you it wanted it? It's uh, fine. You, it's all right if you. <laughs> if you can hear me, then I'm all right. All right. Ms. Cole, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help me God. All right. And uh, could you state and spell your first and last name for us? Nikki, N-I-K-K-I, mm -hmm. Cole, C-O-L-E. All right. And uh, where are you a customer of Confluence Rivers? I own some rental property in Polk County, Missouri. It's uh, the Prairie Heights subdivision just mm -hmm. south of Bolivar. Okay, so P-O-L-K, Polk yes. County. Polk. Yes. All right, uh, go ahead and uh, testify for us, please. So um, 
I'm not exactly sure. I think it's just been a couple of years that they've owned uh, a well. We do not, our uh, sewer system was annexed into the city of Bolivar, so they just have the well that um, Mr. and Mr. Gardner, Mr. and Mrs. Gardner um, sold them. It's, it's a well, that's it. Um, they do nothing for this well, absolutely nothing um, at, that I've seen, that I've seen. Um, if there is a problem, a break, a leak, um, because I own three of the six lots of the trailer park that's attached to, there's a trailer park attached to a subdivision called Prairie Heights, and so we kind of just got thrown in with them. We've had to fix, my, my husband or my brother, or I've had to hire um, a plumbing company to come out and fix anything with the main trunk, anything under the ground. They've never fixed anything. Um, when some, somebody's uh, pipes break, then they usually call me, and then if my husband's in off the road, he goes and fixes it, or I call a brother-in-law or my brother to do it. Um, they, they've never done that. Uh, they've also tried to say that they have a monitoring system. However, they sent me a bill for $1,500 to one of my empty lots that has no nothing but a trunk line. There are n There's no water ser service to that. So if they were monitoring pressure, they would know that there's nothing going there or leaving. Um, uh, can't remember what the last thing was I was. Oh yeah, 237% increase for these people. 237. I explained to them if they bought a loaf of bread for $3 a loaf now, that would be $10.11 per loaf of bread. That's ridiculous. They should not have to pay any, they should pay for what what is inc incurred there. But as far as this whole state and all their stuff, I mean, the, no HOAs and condos. Any, I mean, these people pay $350 a month to rent a trailer house. That's ridiculous. We don't have condos, and we shouldn't have to pay because they have a different investments in different areas. It should be localized. I believe that's all I got to say. Okay. If you'll stay for just a second. Do the commissioners have any questions? All right. Do the attorneys for the parties have any questions for uh, Ms. Cole? All right, thank you, Ms. Cole. Thank you. All right, next on the list is uh, Robert Douthit. Douthit. Use like a W. All right, Hi, I'm Mr. Robert Douthit. All right, Mr. Douthit, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And um, Robert is your first name? Yes. And spell your last name for us, please. D-O-U-T-H-I-T. Okay. Um, and where are you a customer? Or I'm in Cedar Glen. Cedar Glen, and mm -hmm. that is where? In Camdenton. Okay. 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 Go ahead. From listening to all the questions and answers, from what I understand, they, the company that owns the water and sewer, are supposed to make improvements, and then they can work for rate increases to recoup the money that they've spent for improvements. In our, in our condo association, there's been no improvements made it was a very sustainable system when they bought it. And I don't understand how they can put the cart in front of the horse and be asking for these kind of obscene increases when they haven't put any money into the system. It just doesn't make sense. So I'm begging the commission to take a hard look at this because they have, they're spending a lot of money, but they're spending a lot of money buying a lot of other water and sewer systems around 10 states. The money needs to stay and go into improvements and then you can recoup a percentage of those improvements so that the people that are investing in this can expect some kind of a return on their money. But it shouldn't go the cart before the horse and they get these improvements. Then they spend money to do improvements and then they're gonna be asking for another rate increase. It's just, it's just not the way things should be done. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, do the commissioners have any questions? And how about the attorneys for the parties? All right. 
Thank you very much for providing us service. Thank you, sir. All right, next on the list is Stephanie Meyer. Hi. <laughs> I've got before, and you've got your right hand raised for the sake of the record, but before, before I swear you in, I have a very important question for you. Did I pronounce your name correctly? You did. And that makes me very happy because my name is spelled S-E-Y-E-R, and so I think we both pronounce it correctly, <laughs> both pronounce our <laughs> names correctly. So if you'd raise your right hand, please, thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Are you, are you ever called mayor? Yes. I don't understand it. But anyway, <laughs> what, <laughs> what community, where is the property that you are Cedar customer? Green Condominiums. It's a 52-unit condominium in Camdenton. Okay. All right. Go ahead and uh, proceed with your testimony. Um, so during the question and answer, I asked them what improvements they have made to our complex and what the profit margin is after those. And they really didn't know that, which I don't know if they should or not. I don't know for this hearing. However, I mean, we all want clean water, but an over a 200% increase seems absolutely ludicrous to me. And I think it, all we can do is kind of maybe hope that the service commission with their history and their experience can weigh in in this and and given you know hey this is fair for this um, I completely agree with everyone else I don't I don't want to pay for somebody else's water in another um, town or district um, or their improvements I don't know how many years it would take to even out where okay they do this big flat rate for everyone in Missouri um, I don't know how long it would take I don't know that ours is in that big of disarray I just don't know um, and that wasn't really answered it was more general um, during question and answer and I don't like that but however um, and I don't even know if this is possible but since we're a condo they did say that they want to start metering us individually which would be wonderful especially if we do have this crazy increase because some of us aren't even there half the time of the year so they said that the plan for that is maybe three to five years I don't know if we could stipulate nope if we're gonna have this crazy increase then you need to get the individual meters in sooner I don't know if that's possible or not Okay. Anything else? Nope. All right. Do the commissioners have any questions? All right. How about the attorneys for the parties? All right. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Meyer. Judge, could you give me her name again, please? Yes. It's Stephanie Meyer, not Mayer, M-E-Y-E-R. Stephanie is S-T-E-P-H-A-N-I-E. Okay. All right. The next person on the list is Steve. Steve Book, Bach. Three acceptable pronunciations. Yes. <laughs> Did I get two out of three? I got two out of the three. Oh, you got second. All right. Second oh, second one. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, how you tell me how it should be pronounced? My name is Stephen Bauk. Bauk. Gotcha. Oh, you. All right. All right. Oh, uh, if you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, go ahead. If you could state and spell your name, please. Stephen, S-T-E-V-E-N, Bauk, B-O-U-C-K. All right, and um, you're a customer of Confluence Rivers, is that correct? Uh, Cedar Glen. Okay. Located in Camden County, not technically Camdenton, we are. Not in the city limits, but our mail-in address is Camdenton. Right. All right. Um, so the rate of return that the company is expecting, um, I really don't think they should be expecting a quick rate of return since not all these installations are going to be done quickly. I think they have massively maybe been allowed to massively increase their corporation way too quick and keep, I don't know of any service industry that can do that and provide good service. So the downfall is they're jumping ahead of the gun and I would expect the increase to be commiserate with the length of time it takes for them to provide services. In other words, not right now. Slowly, at first, 
cost of living increases has been typically 3%, 3 3% 3 to 4%. Inflation has been significantly higher than that. I don't know of anybody on a fixed income, especially if you're on fixed income, that you can keep up with that, especially this kind of increase. It's very painful, especially with the sudden increases. All right, do the commissioners have any questions? All right, and uh, the uh, parties, do you have any questions? All right. It was stated, it was stated that we have known about this. It's been in litigation probably for over 10 years, and we did not know we were going to be getting this kind of increase. We knew we were in limbo and didn't know where we were going with, and we're upset with the fact that we were forced to be a customer of this provider uh, given their history, our understanding is that they do come in, take up small places, and significantly increase rates. So that's why I am very resistant to accepting the fact that they should be jumping prices up immediately. Okay. Yes, uh, Mr. Kleiser. With regard to the this that you referenced and being in litigation for 10 years, what are you referring to? I believe I'm referring to the receivership from the previous provider. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no further questions, uh, you're free to go, Mr. Bauck. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on the list is Courtney Henderson. And uh, I hate to jinx myself, but all the remaining names I think I can handle. Ms. Henderson, could you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you very much. Now, if you could uh, spell uh, your first and last name for the record. C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y. I'm going to ask you to get closer to the microphone. C-O-U-R-T-N-E-Y. Mm -hmm. Henderson, H-E-N-D-E-R-S-O-N. -E okay. And uh, you are a customer of the company? Yes, I uh, am uh, from Cedar Glen Condos. Okay. And basically, I, you know, I understand that this is a private company. They have investors. They want some money back. It is not clear what kind of reasonable rate of return they are getting, and if it is reasonable. That, that is somewhat obfuscated. You know, coming in and raising your rates 186% seems like it might be predatory business practices to me. This is a private company, but it is also providing essential services to people. And yes, water is a commodity. It's being traded as a commodity. But I do think there has to be some protection of the, the customer. Many Cedar Glen residents registered with the PSC their wish that our water be taken over by a public water company number five and it was not awarded to them. It was awarded to this private company. So um, I really do you know, believe that you know, they're a private company, they've got investors, but I do think that they should not be getting any more than 10 or 10 and a half percent. And if they are getting more than that, I call that into question. I do think they could possibly raise the rates um, more slowly. You know, how long will it take to, for them to get 29 million um, having raised the rates this much? And after they get it, you know, are they gonna go down? I don't think so. I think they're gonna keep going until the next rate hike. So that's it, thank you. Okay, if you, if you don't mind, uh, oh, do you have questions? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Yes. Uh, no. <laughs> You're worrying me about my job security here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but commissioners, do you have any questions? <laughs> Commissioner Holzman, go ahead. Thank you. Um, do you know how long ago it was that um, the you said it was a, another public number five? Yes. Was did you, do you know if they submitted a bid for? I believe they did, and the contract was not awarded to them. Do you know how long ago that, that happened? Jeepers, how long ago was that? 2018, 2019. Something like 2018, that. 2018, okay. All right, thank you. All right. Do uh, any of the attorneys for the parties have any questions? All right, the answer is no. Thank you, Ms. Henderson. Um, next on the list is Lisa Hodges. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Ms. Hodges. Um, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Could you state and spell your first, well, your last name? Lisa, L-I-S-A, Hodges, H-O-D-G-E-S. All right, thank you very much. And uh, where are you a customer? Cedar Complacer? Glen. Cedar Glen. Okay, go ahead. Um, you know, some of the concern is that um, they have, uh, we had a prior provider. I've lived at Cedar Glen for approximately six and a half years. Um, had really no issues at all uh, when Confluence Rivers took over in approximately 2020. Uh, I have had more water issues than I care to address personally. Um, water pressure is <laughs> suspect most of the time. Um, I have, at my own expense, replaced uh, all kinds of plumbing within my condo, a brand new water heater, uh, shower, valves, the list goes on. And uh, for some reason that, and I've had plumbers test for the pressure, no one can figure out why my water pressure is just one day it's yeah, it's okay. Next day, I barely have any. I can uh, barely, well, we have two bathrooms for a reason, but, uh, and two showers, but heaven forbid you would try to use both of them at the same time. And also, um, I am actually unable to even run the shower for 10 minutes without it being ice cold. So I'm not sure where all of those problems stem from. Um, from some of the testimony given here tonight that I've heard, it appears that Confluence Rivers is overextended themselves, and now they are trying to penalize the paying public by increasing rates by an exorbitant amount. They say that they cannot uh, sustain or it's not feasible to have you know, monthly water rates at, we'll say, you know, 20 to $30 per month. Uh, I find that hard to believe. I have lived in many states, and I have never had water rates of what they, well, personally, what they are right now, and then what they are asking to have them be. Okay. Um. Commissioners, do you have any questions? All right. How about the, the attorneys you. for the parties? Uh, excuse me, Ms. Hodges. I uh, believe Mr. Kleiser here has a question for you. Really quick. You mentioned concerns regarding water pressure. Did those e exist at your residence before the acquisition by Confluence? No, they did not. No further questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Next on the list is David Howard. Mr. Howard, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right, thank you. Uh, could you state and spell your last name? David Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D. All right, and um, 
where are you a customer of Confluence Roofing? Chelsea Rose Subdivision in Sunrise Beach, Missouri. It's actually in the county, Camden County. Like uh, Chelsea as in C-H-E-L-S-E-Y? S-E-A. S-E-A, okay, gotcha. Um, go ahead. Um, can I give you some pictures? Uh, uh, I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna get them to anybody if well, I don't give them to you now. Uh, well, the problem is, the problem is, is, is that um, the commissioners can't consider evidence outside the hearing. Well, that's why I'm trying to give them to you now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Your Honor, might I suggest he submit a written comment with the pictures attached in addition to this oral testimony? Uh, that uh, what he's what Mr. Kleiser is suggesting. Can I show them to you? Um, well. I mean, I have to look at it every day. This is, this is pictures of uh, a water container inside of a building that's ate up with woodpecker holes. Well, but again. I mean, they're it, not it, doing much to improve the system. The problem, the problem is that since we're not within an evidentiary hearing where all the parties are present and, and all parties can um, uh, examine is, isn't the exhibits. He part of, isn't he part of uh, Confluence Rivers? Well, again, I, I don't want to get too deep into this, but but there are um, there are protections in an evidentiary hearing as far as uh, the authenticity evidence. of the evidence and so forth that just aren't uh, possible in this local public hearing. So what Mr. Kleiser is suggesting, and and I would agree with him, is if you would submit those photos or copy of those photos with a letter explaining w and you can s you can testify tonight as to what the the photos depict and so forth but to actually have the the photos themselves I can't allow that tonight but you can send those with comments to the Public Service Commission so I, I can tell you don't like that answer <laughs> yeah it doesn't make no sense that's why we're here but again, if you if you would like to testify as to what those pictures show and sh and essentially show us those pictures, I can't take custody of those pictures. Uh, as I guess what I'm trying to tell you. At the last public service commission meeting we had, I had pictures, and they were dying to get them. They were dying to get them. Okay. They well, they had the the receiver follow me out of the room and 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 try to talk me out of the pictures, and I said fifty dollars a piece, and he said, oh, that's too much money. <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. I'm telling you the truth. I'm okay. under oath here. Okay. <laughs> but you didn't take that $50. He wasn't going to put it up, that's for sure. <laughs> All right. But it, if you do kind of understand what I'm saying, I don't, I don't, I have absolutely no problem with you testifying as to what those pictures show and actually um, 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 showing us those pictures but I can't take those with me as evidence, if you know. So what I can show them to you, and then I can take them back. Uh, yes, because I don't have fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, just a second. For the sake of the record, Mr. Um, Howard has brought his photos up to the table here with the commissioners, and uh, so let's. Okay, uh, all right, now Mr. Howard has a microphone and, and we'll proceed, so. These are pictures of a... Oh, I, think it's, I think it's fine, it just needs to be close. These are pictures of a storage tank building that is riddled with woodpecker holes. Okay. And you're showing us, um, well. And rot. Okay. And foundations falling apart. Foundation falling apart for the sake of the record. And uh, there's a total of uh, seven photos that we're that we can see here. Mr. Kolkmeyer, do you need to see those photos, or would you like? To? I think you okay. Should. Okay. Okay. Well. I mean, if they're supposed to be improving the system, there's they shouldn't do any improving there. Uh, 
they showed up at my neighbor's house a year or two ago um, because the pipes froze in this building. And they asked my neighbor if they could hook up to his electricity so they could put a space heater in there to unthaw their pipes. Okay. Also have pictures of the road washed out. Tell you what, let's collect those, give those back to you. All right. A road washed out down to my boat ramp. As you can see, the lake here. Uh huh. So at the top of that photo, there's a boat ramp. Is that what you're saying? Or no, I'm sorry. Also, the uh, culvert oh. with a hole in it in the middle of the road that goes down to the treatment plant and to the boat ramp. And and you're saying how? It, it, it's just their non-maintenance of the road because they're the only ones that use the road except for me. Okay. Because nobody else wants to go down there and walk through the outflow of the treatment plant to put their boat in. Okay. There's a picture of the outflow of the treatment plant. And the water running down onto the boat ramp from the outflow. Okay. I mean, nobody wants, nobody wants to go through the outflow of the treatment plant to, to put their boat in. Nobody uses that. That's, that's all. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. All right, thank you, Mr. Howard. Uh, do you have further testimony you'd like to, yes. to present? Yes. Um, the receiver that took over our system, in his bankruptcy filing, I believe it was, I went through a lot of your court stuff on the internet, and he said that this system would never be up to par because the water and sewer are in the same ditch in areas. So if one has a leak, the other can go into it. If they just shut off the water for a few minutes and the sewer has a leak around there, it can actually draw that sewer into that pipe from the suction from the water. We also have a manhole that's in a guy's garage that nobody knows about but me. Okay. I, 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 the last pricing the price was raised in 2009 was like dollars, you know, two and three dollars. It wasn't double and triple of the amount like they're trying to get now. A dollar or two people could probably handle, but double and triple, no. I mean, it doesn't make sense. Everybody, most of the people here are on fixed wages, fixed incomes. And the way prices on everything are now, gas, food, everything is so high, and now they're trying to raise, you know? It's, it's hit everybody while they're down. Let's not wait until the economy's doing good and everybody's doing all right and then try to get a dollar or two. Let's try to triple the rates and get it now. Okay. That's all I got to say. All right, and if you'll stick around for a second, do the commissioners have any questions for Mr. Howard? All right. Yes, Your Honor, I have a couple questions. Yes, Mr. Woodsmall. Um, I'm new with the company, so you're going to have to help me with some clarification, if you would. Um, did this you say that you haven't had a rate increase in 13 years? Is that what I heard? No, since 2009. I don't know. 14 that was years. That was when it was put in receivership because of the people that weren't taking care of it to begin with. Okay. And the receiver was supposed to take care of it, but he evidently spent most of his time in court with the original owners, so that's where the money went or that's the best I can think. I've called the Public Service Commission and asked them and they can't tell me where the money went. They have no idea. The receiver should have been keeping really good records, but according to the Public Service Commission, they have no idea what happened to the money. Okay, so 14 years. Um, then you were talking about this road with the gully down it, I believe you said, and it goes down to a boat ramp? Yes. Okay, so. It's also the road to the treatment plant. Okay, so it's a public access road. More people than just the company can use it. Yes. Okay, so it may not necessarily be owned by the company is what you're saying. No, not necessarily, no. Uh, okay. But they're the ones that uses it. They're there every day, and I'm the only other one that uses it, and I haven't used it in a year and a half now. But it may be a county road for all you know. No, it's not a county road. It's a private road. It, it's the subdivision private road. Okay, subdivision private road. 
Then finally, you were mentioning this tank house that you said is riddled with woodpecker holes. You didn't see the pictures? No. Um, you want to see them? <laughs> let, me, let me get some clarification. Are you certain? It, well, let me ask you first. Is there a tank up on top of the hill that you're aware of? On top of which hill? I've just been told that there's a tank on top of a hill. On a there's top a of a tank hill. that's uh, two houses away from me. Say two houses away from me. That's not in this tank house. That's no. Huh? The, the tank that you're talking about is something they just installed. Okay. And so, are you certain? I I don't know. Was this tank house bought by the company? Or if we're using yes, a different yes, tank. Yes, it's part of the original system, yes. But do you know whether the company bought it? It may have been part of the original system, but. As far as I know, they don't own any of the land that any of this stuff's on. I mean, for a while, they didn't own any of it. It was in court so often that who knows? But I'm saying that this, they came to my neighbor and asked him to use his electricity to put a heater in that tank house so it would unthaw the pipes. Okay. Components Rivers did that. That was all the questions I had. Thank you, Mr. Howard. Thank you. All right. Are there any follow-up questions for Mr. Howard? All right. Thank you, Mr. Howard. All right. There are two more names on the list. Uh, the first is Jennifer Hawthorne. All right. Is Ms. Th Ms. Hawthorne, that, that's you? All right, um, you might have to lower that microphone some. All right, thank you. Uh, Ms. Hawthorne, would you raise your right hand, please? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give today in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, sir. All right, thank you very much. Uh, could you uh, state and spell your first and last name? <coughs> Jennifer, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R. Hawthorne, H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E. All right, and uh, you're a customer of Confluence Rivers? Cedar Glen in Cedar. Camden County. Okay, all right, go ahead. All right, I'm representing myself and my mother, Donna Pullman, uh, the lovely lady over there at the wall in a turquoise shirt. Um, I have three points to make. The expectation of this increase, how it threatens the affordability for most of us, and the personal impact on it. A lot of people have spoken about uh, just in, in some generalities in terms of this, but I want to tell you how it impacts myself and my mother. Um, first of all, I, I feel like this expectation of an increase is normal. There's, we're, we're all going to pay higher rates for many things as the years go on. Um, I also expect that they're going to maintain and improve the systems that we all rely upon. But this is a pretty tough increase to swallow at 39%, 39.7% for water for our area and 185.9% for sewer for our, for our area. Now I will say we have not in our personal condo, we have not had issues with water pressure, with water quality. Um, we also own a rental unit with a very long-term renter in it, and she's not reported any of those things either. What it does do, though, for us personally is threaten the affordability of being able to remain in that home. Um, us, like others in our complex, especially our senior residents, many of them living alone, as my mother was before I moved here three years ago, we also have, as I spoke of, a rental unit that we've had a long-term renter in there. Um, we have kept that rent moderate, believe that it's best to keep a moderate level of rent for a person and keep them longer term. Um, I question whether that person will be able to um, stay with us if we have to increase um, her rent significantly because of this. Um, she is, has a career here in Camden County and, and is really valuable to us. She's lived with us for many years. The personal impact, my mother will be 80 next month. 
Um, as expected, she's on Social Security and she has some moderate retirement investments that were made over the years. She is elderly, she is disabled, and she has significant health concerns. These are the reasons that I am here. She's been a condo resident there for 18 years. She served on our board of directors um, and was well aware of some of the situations with Cedar Glen. Um, we have needed to, we are in a disability accessible unit and we have needed to modify the interior of that unit so that she can remain in her home. I returned home three years ago because of her health concerns. My goal was to keep her in her home. I did leave a professional career making a lot more than I've been able to make here. Um, I was in another state and I will tell you that water in that state is expensive. I was in an area where uh, we were on the edge of the desert and it is pricey to have your water. So I know what a really high rate of water was. I was also making eight times what I've been able to make here to afford that water. Here, I've taken on part-time and seasonal work. That means I'm making now what I made in 1984 as a full-time employee in my first job at a college. That means I'm now low income. I'm 59. I just turned 59 June 4th. I'm too young to withdraw retirement funds and I'm too young for Social Security. So in order to care for my mother, we are frugal, we are very cautious about our budget and what we spend. Um, our incomes are limited and somewhat fixed. This excessive rate increase really truly makes it likely that us and others in some of the same situations that I'm very aware of at Cedar Glen and I'm sure exist in some of these other condo areas and home areas, for us, it means we've needed to discuss whether we sell and leave the area. Obviously, with my mother's limitations, finding something affordable that is also completely disability accessible is really challenging in this area. Um, those are situations we don't wanna have to face. Um, and so I ask you to consider each, personal, each person's personal story, personal situation, as you go forward with these proceedings. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Um, do the commissioners have any questions for Ms. Hawthorne? All right. Any of the uh, parties have questions? All right. All right, Ms. Hawthorne, thank you. Can I get one more? <laughs> Mr. Howard. Um, <laughs> I do like you. <laughs> All right, if you'll step back to the microphone, you are, uh, you are still under oath. If you can make it quick, please. This is David Howard. Uh, the, yeah, my name is David Howard, H-O-W-A-R-D, mm -hmm. Chelsea Rose Subdivision. Um, the original owner of this water and sewer system was th it was taken away from them, it was sold, but they got the money out of it. What kind of deal is that? What kind of deal is that? They got the system taken away from them, it was sold, but they got the money out of it, and we're still paying for it. Uh, what, in any right mind, that doesn't make any sense, none at all. And the person they paid to install the system, they took to court, and didn't pay him because, oh gee, it wasn't put in right. Okay. It's, it's, it's just funny how the money goes around. You know, they take the system away from him and then they sell it and then they give him all the money instead of giving it back to the customers. Or at least giving some of it to the customers. I mean, we've been paying extra since 2009 and we've been putting up with the leaks and the, ever since we bought the places. Okay. All right, I do appreciate your testimony, Mr. Howard. All right, uh, the last name on the list is Wendy Rogers. All right, uh, good evening, Ms. Rogers. Good evening. Uh, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? <laughs> yes. All right, 
And uh, you're Wendy Rogers. Yes. Could, could you spell that last name for us? R O G E R S. And just just so I'm uh, positive about this, you spell your first name W E N D Y. That is correct. All right. Thank you. And um, you're a customer of Confluence Rivers. Actually, I represent Cedar Glen. Okay. Condo complex. Okay. I am the association manager. All right. They've uh, they've asked me to speak on behalf of that them, if that's all right. Okay, yeah, go ahead. So first of all, it was concerning that only six days were given for this hearing because there are a lot of people who live at Cedar Glen who would have wanted to be here, and I didn't know we could submit letters or I would have encouraged that, but um, it was not possible for them to be here, so that's not a lot of notice. Um, Receivership was mentioned earlier, um, Cedar Glen, because of this receivership situation, it made them vulnerable to something like this taking place. Um, the, a newly appointed receiver assigned um, Central States, Josiah Cox, to be a stalking horse bidder. Because of that, they were able to acquire Cedar Glen without having to bid more all they had to do was match. And we had a public provider bid the same, well, $800,000 for our system, and all Josiah Cox, and the, as the stocking horse bidder, had to do was say yes, that he would take it, and he didn't have to bid a dollar more. So we went through the hearings with the PSC. We went through that whole process. We tried to... Um, petition the PSC to be uh, to have the public provider because people from Cedar Glen could sit on that board people from Cedar Glen um, and that board use the same water care about the community as opposed to somebody who's off in St. Louis or wherever uh, to dictate what happens to their water and sewer but all the way to the Missouri Supreme Court we fought that and did not prevail the PSC decision was that the private provider get the system and that's what it stayed at. We had 147 plus or minus people make comments on the PSC's public comment section, which you have referenced today. And I don't know if that gets monitored or appreciated because that's a lot of people to express they did not want this private company to have their water sewer system. 147 is a lot. And I don't know if it was valued. The PSC gets to approve this kind of thing. The PSC gets to let this company, which went 10 years ago from owning two systems in Missouri to owning 69. By their report, they proudly said they have 69. So in the state of Missouri, they now have that many. Plus, they have exceeded, they have grown exponentially to 10 different states. And I, of course, you said that doesn't matter with what's happening in Missouri. So Missouri alone, 69 different companies. And now they want to combine and make all that funds come from everybody, this is not right. Because when they first took over Cedar Glen, it was supposed to be that the CR, that the PSC approved the purchase. They based it on the promises that were made of improvements that would need to be done, um, that they were going to do the improvements, and then we knew that they would increase the rates because they had a track record of doing that which is one of the reasons we fought it so hard. They had a track record of exponentially increasing rates, even back then. So I understand now the term is considered reasonable return. Um, so now we end up with our people have posted 71 publics, public um, comment section comments. Um, not wanting this rate increase. I don't know if they've been read. I don't know if they've been acknowledged. I understand the purpose of the PSC is to prevent harm. Prevent harm. And, and that's not just whether the water quality is good. That's if the rates completely make it impossible for those people to, to live or stay in their home. Harm is many things. So harm is letting a company grow so big that they don't have the revenue to go ahead and do the things they said they would do for each system that they knew what it was like when they bought it. They knew when they bought it because they had to come and tell you. They had to come and talk to you about it. And they had to tell what they wanted to change about it. And they knew what the rate was that was going to be paid. So there was no blind eye 
turn to, to any of this. They knew exactly what was coming. So rate hikes now to be over 100 to 300 percent is harm. Nobody's going to say that's not harmful. We've also had issues, and I'm just going to go ahead and continue because I got five minutes, you said. Reports of issues were handled like a subdivision. We have a, we have a condo complex, and I presume most of the water systems they buy up are subdivisions because in their computer system, we are a subdivision. And when we tried to report things that were going on, like septic flowing over the side of a storage tank between buildings, they would say, well, we need to know which customer's reporting this because we're going to bill them if we get there and it's not happening. And I'm like, it's not like this. This is a condo complex. And they said, no, we see it as a subdivision, so you have to give us the person, and we're going to bill that person. If we get there, it's not still overflowing. So you're scared to call and say something because they're going to bill some innocent person who lives there at the condo, and I'm trying to help because septic's flowing over the top of a tank. They've threatened in the last week to shut off five customers. Five customers were going to get their water shut off, and every single one turned out to be a billing error. So I'm just, I'm just saying there's a lot of things that needed to be improved within the system, and part of it is that you don't have a condo complex built into your billing system, it would appear, from every time we've talked to them. The other thing that's going on is our sand filtration system at Cedar Glen is still recorded as Cedar Glen construction and they haven't paid the taxes. We have talked to our attorney. Our attorneys tried to talk to this company. This company has still not paid the taxes or recorded it properly as being their property. So that's another issue that needs to be taken care of. All right. All right. Mr. Ho er, sorry. Commissioner Holzman? Oh, when you called the company for the overflow of the sewage, did they arrive and fix the problem? Eventually, but we were threatened with if you if you did that, I was really worried because what if it did quit before they got there? You know what I mean? I could see that it was happening in that moment, but was that does that mean an innocent owner was going to get potentially billed for something because I was trying to help with a situation which obviously needs to be corrected. Okay. So. All right, thank you. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Would you like to repeat what he said? He said the that they've installed a system um, for monitoring. That so. The, I believe what he said was the and the alarms. The alarms didn't, didn't go didn't off. Go off. Okay. Yeah. And is that is that? Was that, that is your correct. experience? Okay. That is correct. All right, Mr. Or Commissioner Holzman. I'm sorry, Commissioner Kolkmeyer. Yes, um, it's troublesome that you only knew six days. You had six days' notice. We've had a, probably a month. This has been on my calendar for probably a month. So it, it's definitely been more than six days. So um, I'm not sure where the ball was dropped there. So, but I, if I sure apologize on that. It's not too late for your people to send comments to the PSC, and the judge is going to tell you how to do that in just a minute. I think we know how to do it. We've been doing it. That's okay. what I'm saying. We posted okay. 147 the first time, and we've already posted 71 the okay. last time I checked. You made the comment. It's too late to, to send comments. Well, I meant if I had been able to provide a written comment that was going to go to the Office of Public Counsel because he does represent the concerns of the people, I would have done that. But it's still not too late. Okay. And, and uh, just speaking for myself, I do know that as of, uh, I believe, Friday morning, it was up to 104 comments. I think okay. you said 72. Um, are there questions from the uh, attorneys for the parties? Mr. Woods just small. real quick, um, just to be completely upfront with you, just so you know, and the people that are at your subdivision, there is a virtual local public hearing on Wednesday, so they can get online to participate in that. So it should be in your notice in case you want to share that. I, it was in the letter. I've, I've shared them. It, was, it said that in the letter.
All right, thank, thank you, Ms. Rogers. Now, Ms. Rogers is the last name on the list. Are there any others? I'm seeing some hands. Okay, I'll, I'll take you first, ma'am. All right, um, could you state your name, please? Marshall Wallander. We're gonna get that microphone adjusted for you. Get very close. Marsha Wallander. All right. Could you, uh, well, actually, let me place you under oath first, and then I'll have you uh, spell your name. So uh, to make sure you don't mislead us about how to spell your name. So would you raise your right hand, please? Yep. Uh, do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And go ahead and state your name and spell it for us. Marsha, M-A-R-S-H-A. Wallander, W-A-L-L-A-N-D-E-R. Okay, and uh, are you a Confluence Rivers customer? Yes. And where is your property located? Cedar Green in Camden County. Cedar Green, G-R-E-E-N? -E -E okay. Correct. All right. Uh, I'm here to um, get a little nervous here. We have a rate increase of over 200% proposed to us. We was recently purchased. We have passed, always have passed any of the DNR tests for the water testing for our treatment plant. And uh, since we are a small community of only 52 condos, a lot of our people could not attend tonight because of the short notice which was given. And I am encouraging the PSC board to be, watch very closely and encourage them to watch this request of a raise, because we feel a 200% raise is astronomical. I mean, we have not seen any improvements done. I know they had pictures that showed the sledge. Um, and also, when they do that work, do they send something to the board to tell us? How do we know what they're doing up there? I mean, how do we know? this? We've never had any problems. So I am just really encouraging that before this raise be passed, that uh, everything is looked into. And that's it. Okay. Are there any questions? All right. All right. Thank you, Ms. Walder. And I saw another hand. Yes, sir. If you'll step up to the microphone, please. All right. Uh, would you raise your right hand to be sworn in? Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony given in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. And what is your name? David Brown. B-R-O-W-N? Correct. All right. Mr. Brown, uh, are you a Confluence Rivers customer? Yes. And where is your property located? I'm the president of the uh, Missing Well Incorporated HOA in Benton County. So M I S S I N G. Correct. W E L L. Correct. <coughs> okay, go ahead. Um, a few points. Uh, I agree with much of what's been said here tonight. Um, our current rates are twenty dollars a month for water and around twenty dollars a month for sewer, or eighteen dollars a month for sewer. The, the letter we received showed increases of 236.7% for water and 314.8% for sewer. Um, they are right now currently installing water lines, new water lines to uh, connect to the rural water there in Benton County. Um, right now, the way this, this association or the properties were developed by the developers there are numerous lots that are on uh, lateral fields. Uh, so many of them are not connected to the sewer system. Okay, and just for the sake of the record, lateral fields? Yes. Okay. And then uh, many people are also not connected at all. Uh, Benton County put a hold on anyone connecting to the uh, sewage lagoon. Uh, so they are on pump out tanks. They can pu only pump, have, have a service come in and pump their tanks. Um, so uh, there's got to be an opportunity there down the road that those people should be able to connect. Um, in some areas, those um, 
sewer lines don't even run near their property. Um, the other problem we have is that many of those residents down there, there's, there's uh, maybe 50% of our owners are there full time. The other ones are part time residents over the weekend, may come down, spend a week or two during the summer, and then, you know, they're done. Um, right now, we do not have metered connections. Uh, in the letter we received that the rates, uh, the ask is that the rates would be implemented by November of this year, 2023. So while everyone here was speaking tonight, I did get onto EFAS and look up a uh, testimony by Mr. John Seaver with the Public Service Commission. He, uh, he had uh, pro proposed a rate of return of 7.7% in that sworn testimony. He's also recommended uh, basically five different rate levels, um, and he's recommended one for water and one for sewer for metered services, and then he's also recommended uh, rates for unmetered water and then the sewer rate to go along with that. That seems to be a more appropriate recommendation based on that testimony. Um, and, and do you know how to spell his name? Uh, it's John Seaver, S-E-A-V-E-R. That, te I'm sorry, yes, Jordan, thank you. And that testimony was done on June 8th. In this case, in this yes. file number? Okay. Yes. Uh, the other issue we've got is most of the people that are living there full time are, you know, limited income, which we've heard again tonight. In Benton County, your median income is around 48,000. Your per, per capita income is around 28,000. And again, those people are on uh, limited income. Benton County is actually considered an impoverished county. So that's really all I have tonight. Okay. Uh, are there any. Uh, questions from the commissioners? No questions. I'd like to take my seat over time. Oh, sure. Sure. All right. Um, so, for the sake of the record, uh, Commissioner Holzman, Commissioner Holzman uh, would like to make some comments at, at the close of the hearing, uh, but does not have any questions for you at this time. Do any of the parties have any questions? All right. Um, Thank you, Mr. Brown, for your testimony. Is there anyone else that would like to testify? Yes, ma'am. If you can come up to the microphone, please. All right. Would you raise your right hand, please? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give tonight in this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. And what is your name? My name is Sarah Reiter, R-E-I-T-E-R. -E um, and I'm going to have to ask you if your first name is spelled with an H or without an without. H? Without. Okay. So S-A-R-A. S-A-R-A. All right. And are you a Confluence Rivers customer? I am. And where? I where live is at that Cedar property? Glen. Cedar Glen? Well, I, correction. I did live at Cedar Glen. I still own a piece of property there, which is almost the total of the estate that I have. Okay. I was a public school teacher, and I'm on teacher retirement, mm -hmm. and uh, I have been able to move into uh, a retirement center in Columbia, and this year we had an 11% increase in our monthly costs. My condo, if I get this increase, I will be paying an equal amount for water and sewer, and I use the minimum because I'm there occasionally and my family is there a lot, or more often than I am. But we still use just the minimum of everything. My electric bill for the heat, air, light, water heater, everything 
runs between six and eight hundred dollars annually. I currently pay the minimum for the water, fifty three seventy eight, and that's about six hundred annually. If this increase goes in, I, the best I can figure, I'm going to be nearly double. I'm going to have a 50% increase annually. I do not have Social Security, even though I have been married twice, because in Missouri, if you're a teacher, you can't double dip. Although the world in the United States is full of people who double dip. I have cousins who were in the service and they have Social Security and they have other private investments. Teachers in Missouri do not. Um, I do not want to see this rate increase and I know there must be other people like me. I'm 87. I'm not going to be around probably more than 13 more years. <laughs> and I would like very much to be able to keep that condo for my children. Thank you. Okay. All right. Ms. Ryder, could you s stick around uh, just in case? Do the commissioners have any questions? All right. Do the uh, attorneys for the parties? All right. Ms. Ryder, thank you for your years of service as a teacher, and thank you for your testimony tonight. Are there any other persons that wish to testify? All right. All right. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if there are no other people to testify, we'll give the commissioners a chance to make uh, closing remarks. Commissioner Holzman. I just want to take a minute and thank everybody for coming out tonight. Um, I know public speaking can sometimes be terrifying, but if you care enough about something, you'll get up and, and say your piece. This is a process. Um, this is one step in the process. This is our opportunity to hear from you, which we have done, and we, and we appreciate that. We will then have an evidentiary hearing where all of the facts will be presented. Um, the legislature has established by law an authorized rate of return. That is to incentivize and to create the framework by which companies like Confluence will pick up distressed systems, make investments, and then get a return on that. That is by law, they have the ability to do that, which guarantees investment in our state. But that doesn't mean that what they've asked for is what they're gonna get. It doesn't mean that, that they won't get that. It just means that that's the starting point for what they believe that their investments should return to their investors. And then the evidentiary hearing We'll go through the facts of the case and staff and OPC will present their side of the issue uh, to better determine and understand what those investments truly are. And then we as a commission will make a determination what that final rate of return is. So I just wanted to give you an insight into the fact that this is a process and I promise you that we will do our due diligence to make sure that whatever the end result will be, will be reflective of what the facts are so that we can have a, a good state with healthy and clean water for everybody. So thank you for coming tonight and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Oh, could we could we wait until we go off the record for that question? All right, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Kolkmeyer. Yes, thank you, Judge. Uh, again, I wanna thank everyone for coming out and I wanna kinda piggyback on what uh, Commissioner Holzman said, uh, we, the PSC, employee, uh, like the judge said in his opening comments, uh, attorneys, uh, auditors, economists, uh, and staff that will dig into what's been asked and then come back and make, make recommendations to, to us, the commissioners. So we also have this staff that does a deep dive and then we also have the the office of public uh council that also we a lot of their comments a lot of your comments go to them and then we hear from them and um, so that here again this this is a, a a process this is one step so thank you for coming out we appreciate everyone's comments and we do take those under advisement so thanks again Thank you, Commissioner. Um, 
again, I want to um, go back and if you have um, if you have family friends who, whether because of short notice or they just couldn't make it tonight, would like to to uh, submit comments, you can do that on the Public Service Commission website. That is psc.mo.gov. Um, and if you'll reference this file number, this case number, WR-2023-0006. So if there is nothing further, uh, I'll adjourn the hearing and we'll go off the record.